Hi, I'm Doug Rex from Indiana University, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about a study that uh, we've performed that's going to be published in gastrointestinal endoscopy on the issue of uh, clipping large polypectomy sites. So this is not a randomized controlled trial. It's, uh, it's a trial that utilizes historical controls. Uh, essentially, it's about 250 uh, colorectal polyps that were two centimeters or larger, all uh, sessile or flat in shape. Those were the controls. And then at a period uh, in time several years ago, we began when possible to clip these uh, sites closed um, using uh, the microvasive resolution uh, clip. And uh, we have a group of, of also about 250 sites that were considered to be fully closed and another group of about 50 that could only be partly closed. Sometimes closure could not be complete because part of the polyp uh, was simply too big uh, to close or perhaps the location was such that uh, the clips really couldn't uh, be placed. The key endpoint uh, of the study is looking at the rate of delayed bleeding. Now all the polyps were used, uh, were removed using injection with uh, saline, typically with a contrast agent, methylene blue or indigo carmine, and then they were removed using low power coagulation uh, current uh, applied by snare cautery. Low power coagulation current has been associated in the literature with delayed bleeding rates. Uh, most recently in a study from the University of Pennsylvania, the rate was 7.3 percent with polyps that were smaller than the ones that that uh, were studied in this series. Um, and uh, in our study, the rate was 9.7%. That may seem high to people, but actually for polyps of this size, and these polyps were predominantly in the proximal location, there are several studies that have been reported with higher bleeding rates than that. So that's the bleeding rate in the control group. In the clipped group, um, the partially clipped group had an intermediate rate of bleeding. In the fully clipped group, the rate was reduced to one8 uh, percent. So uh, the overall effect then is that not clipping uh, the site a bleeding rate of 9.7 percent, clipping uh, the site uh, a bleeding rate of 1.8 percent. Uh, these were all bleeds that required um, hospitalization or repeat uh, colonoscopy or sigmoidoscopy depending on the location of the polyp um, or um, at, at least uh, endoscopy and in some cases transfusion, a, a small number of cases. So these were these were the definition of these um, bleeding events. So it, using these historical controls, it looked like clipping uh, significantly reduced the rate of bleeding. When we looked at the cost of this, considering a cost of about $150 and an average of 3.7 clips uh, applied whenever clips were applied, um, the overall cost uh, of preventing one delayed bleed was a bit over $7,000. So probably, uh, at least in this study, a cost-effective approach to the prevention of delayed bleeding. That doesn't include the cost for the time for application um, of the clips. So the bottom line um, is that uh, I think this is a, sort of the first study of its kind. It does suggest that uh, prophylactic closure of large sessile polypectomy sites, at least when they've been removed with low power coagulation, is effective in preventing um, delayed uh, hemorrhage. There are a few other complications, including a perforation in, in uh, both groups. The one that was in the, in the clipping arm was closed with clips. The other patient, uh, earlier patient, uh, before clipping was available, did require surgical therapy. But really the differences between the two arms are accounted for uh, by delayed bleeding. And um, so we think that the evidence here warrants uh, a randomized controlled trial and that the differences between the two groups could be used to uh, power um, such a study. And I think, you know, in terms of, of uh, uh, practice, um, we still don't have, you know, clear, perfect uh, level one evidence to support the use of clipping. But I think it would be reasonable for clinicians to consider closing large uh, colorectal polyp sites after snare resection, especially if the patient is going to be re-anticoagulated, if they might have to be restarted on a on an antiplatelet agent like uh, clopidogrel, um, or uh, if you know if there are extenuating circumstances, such as you feel the patient might not tolerate a bleed well because of their age or comorbidities, or perhaps a very long distance that they've traveled in order to get uh, to the endoscopy suites. These are some of the, the reasons that we would consider 
uh, clip closure in our practice. Um, thank you very much.